Number 118, the, uh, disconnect the power from the starter generator and ignition with sufficient engine speed is reached. Disconnect power from the starter generator and ignition when sufficient engine speed is reached. So the purpose of an undercurrent relay in a starter generator system is to disconnect power from the starter generator and ignition when sufficient engine speed is reached. Number 119, it's a hung start, a hung start. So in a typical starter generator system, which under which of the following starting circumstances may it be necessary to use the start stop switch a hung start a hung start under a typical starter generating system under which of the following conditions circumstances may it be necessary to use the start stop switch well if you're turning on the engine and you notice that she is trying to keep going and just doesn't want to start it's a hung start you turn it off hung start you stop that starting sequence hit the stop button all right question number 120 it's one or three we have vector figure number five so which malfunction will allow the igniters to operate when tested but be inoperative during a starting attempt so number one or number three so either conductor number 10 is broken or the ignition relay may be inoperative Conductor number 10 is broken, or the ignition relay may be an, op an operative. One or three. One or three. Number 121, back to figure number five. Which malfunctions will allow the igniters to operate normally during a start, but inoperative when to be tested? Once again, it's one and three. One and three, so conductor number 14 might be broken, or conductor minus 15 will be broken. All right, one and three. So one and three for both figure number five. Figure number five, it's one or three. One or three. Number 122 is highest at the start of motor rotation. Is highest at the start of motor rotation. So when using an electric starter motor, current usage is highest at the start of the motor rotation. When using the electric starter motor, current usage is highest when the start of a motor rotation. Number 123 is highest at the start of the motor rotation. Again, so when using an electric starter motor, the current flow through it is highest when the start of the motor rotation. So they're both similar questions. They talk about the same thing. When is electric starter motor current flow? The highest is when it's at the highest at the start of the motor rotation. It's highest at the start of the motor rotation. Number 124. Highest at the start of the motor rotation again. So that's three back to back. When using an electric starter, the current flowing through it is at the highest of the start of the motor rotation. Electric starter motor current flow is at its highest at the start of the motor rotation. Number 125, high power to weight ratio. High power to weight ratio. So the primary advantage of a pneumatic air turbine starters over comparable electric starters for turbine engines is a high power to weight ratio a high power to weight ratio. The primary advantage to pneumatic air turbine starters over comparable electric starters for turbine engines is the high power to weight ratio. Number 126, the pause recontact, recontacting and riding on the ratchet gears. Okay, hold on. Number 126, the pause recontacting and riding on the ratcheting gear. The pause recontacting and riding on the ratchet gear. So the clicking sound heard on engine coast down in a pneumatic starter incorporating a sprang clutch ratchet assembly is an indication of the pause recontacting and riding on the ratchet gear. The clicking sound heard on engine coast down in a pneumatic starter 
incorporating a sprung clutch ratcheting assembly is an indication of the paws recontacting and riding the ratchet gear. Paws recontacting and riding the ratchet gear. Number 127. So radial inward flow turbine and axial flow turbine. Radial inward flow turbine and axial flow turbine. So pneumatic starters are usually designed with what types of airflow in pigmented systems? Radial inward flow turbine and axial flow turbines. Pneumatic starters are usually designed as what type of airflow in pigmented systems? Radial inward flow turbines and axial flow turbines. Number 128, oil level and magnetic drain plug conditions. Oil level and magnetic drain plug conditions. So inspection of pneumatic starters by maintenance technicians usually includes checking the oil levels and magnetic drain plug conditions. Oil levels and magnetic drain plug conditions. Number 129. The inspection of a magnetic chip detector. So air turbine starters are generally designed so that the reduction gear stresses or damages may be detected by a, an inspection of the magnetic chip detector. Inspection of the magnetic chip detector. Number 130. Activation of a flyweight cutout switch. Activation of a flyweight cutout switch. So airflow in the pneumatic starter from the ground unit is normally prevented from causing starter overspeed during engine start by activation of a flyweight cutout switch. Activation of a flyweight cutout switch. Airflow pneumatic starter from the ground unit is normally prevented from causing starter overspeeds during the engines by activation of a flyweight cutout switch. Number 131, drive shaft gear point. Drive shaft gear point. So a safety feature usually employed in pneumatic starters that is used if the clutch does not release from the engine drive at the proper time during start is the drive shaft shear point. Dry shaft shear point. Dry shaft shear point. A safety feature usually employed in a pneumatic starter that is used if the clutch does not release from the engine drive at the proper time during the start is the drive shaft shear point. Number 132. Stator nozzle design that chokes airflow and stabilizes turbine wheel speed. Stator nozzle that design stator nozzle design that chokes airflow and stabilizes turbine wheel speed. So a safety feature usually employed in direct cranking starters that is used to prevent the starter from reaching burst speed is the star nozzle design chokes airflow and stabilizes turbine wheel speed. Start Stator nozzles design the chokes airflow and destabilizes turbine wheel speed. Stator nozzle design that chokes airflow and stabilizes turbine wheel speed. Number 133. The starter will overspeed at a given N2. The starter will overspeed at a given N2. So in the event a pneumatic start valve will not operate and the manual override must be used, the starter T handle must be closed at a scheduled starter dropout because the starter will overspeed at a given N2 in the event that the pneumatic start valve will not operate and the manual override must be used. The starter T handle must be closed at the scheduled starter dropout because the starter will overspeed at a given N2. Guys, take a quiz and I'll see you soon.